Yo, yo, what's going on, everybody? Yo, check this out. My name's Jan Hunter Jr., coming at you from Wire Hunter Music Studios, and I have five tips to enhance your music production. Let's get right into it. That's Hunter. For those who don't know me, I'm a music producer from Fairfield, California. I've had the great pleasure of producing for The Walls Group, Janine White and Anale. Graduated from Berklee College of Music in 2012 and have been loving just every bit of this experience ever since. So that's just a little bit about me. Let's get into these five tips. Number one, arrangement and genre. The main thing with production is knowing the foundation of the genre that you're producing in, whether it's a pop track, whether it's a trap type track, you know, whether it's R&B or hip hop, whatever it may be, is knowing the arrangement formula, the format. So chorus, hook, um, refrain, stuff like that. And knowing how to musically set up these different sections of the song. Um, a lot of issues I've found is, is not knowing how to sequence, not knowing how to format, and all this has to do with the arrangement and the arrangement for the genre. So but I just wanna give you guys the generals to kinda of change your mindset a little bit. If you've been feeling discouraged about production or you feel like you're just not getting it, well, I'm here to change your mind. So, arrangement, let's go with trap. You know, let's go with trap. Typically, it starts with like some type of, you know, piano melodic motif or harmonic motif or something like that in that 120 to 135 or maybe even like, you know, 140 BPM. The main core element of the song is whatever that melodic motif is. It's typically, you know, maybe like a dark piano. There's more creative stuff out there, of course. Even though the piano is just kind of leading out the rapper or the, or the vocalist, um, the singer, shall I say, um, they might already be singing the hook, but it's just a broke down version of the hook. We really have to stay up with these arrangement, uh, you know, implementations. That's not even a word, <laughs> but stay up with these uh, uh, with the arrangement. The better your arrangement is, the more you're going to intrigue an artist. Tip number two, sound selection, guys. We have so many different uh, platforms. We got Output, they make Arcade, and you got Exhale, and then you got Arteria, the Virtual Synth Collection, the V-Synth Collection, uh, I think it's V-Synth number 12, uh, seven, and I'll list that in the uh, description below. And while I'm at it, let me go ahead and take a pause to say, guys, go ahead and please subscribe to my channel. Uh, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and share it, and make sure to hit that bell icon uh, to get notified for further videos so sound selection uh, I like to use splice splice is one of my favorite spots to go because it's so fast and it has exactly what I'm looking for right when I need it if I don't have it in my library already so check out splice.com but sound selection even if it's like coming up with melodic stuff um, it's, it's the it's just a dope space and also I like to use logic for a lot of my sounds because logic has some dope of libraries alchemy to list one um it's just amazing you could really do some severe damage with alchemy i can i can do pop i can do gospel um i can do trap i can do hip-hop all with using alchemy instruments because the sounds actually affect the mix and we're going to talk about mix later on but the sounds directly impact the mix so make sure that we're using quality sounds again go to splice that's like the number one hot spot right now for sounds. If you're having issues with drums, go to Splice. It's a dope spot. Whatever you're producing, you need to have that in mind. Like, okay, if I wanna do a pop track, then I'm gonna need pop sounds, you know, drum sounds specifically. I'm a drummer, so I'm gonna navigate to drums instantly to make sure that I'm capturing exactly what I want. It's all about how you tweak them. And so, I can list all the sounds that I use. I can tell you the exact sound and the patch that I use, but it's gonna sound different because of how I tweaked it. But that comes with time, that comes with your personality, and that comes with what you're trying to go for. So sound selection is super important, it impacts everything. If the sounds is whack, well, then, you know. So that's it for sounds. Let's go into point number three, which is precision 
editing. The better your editing is, the, the more intriguing your production will be. So with having the sounds, you went to Splice, you went to Arcade, you got the build up, you got the stuff. Now it's all about editing those sounds to um, be precise. And I'm a precision editor where it's like, I want that cutoff to be right at like on, in Logic. I need that slice to be right at beat four and crossfade it, crossfade like right there. And I'm talking in generals cause I just wanna, I really wanna change your mind opposed to like telling you exactly what to do in Logic. It's more of a concept than you can do this in Logic. Shout out to Logic users out there. Uh, Logic, you can do this in Pro Tools, you can do it in Studio One, you can do it in Fruity Loops, you can do it in all these different DAWs. Then the next thing with precision editing is using your piano roll to your advantage where I can customize and edit uh, whether I'm quantizing my drums or whether I'm playing an 808 bass line, I can really customize it in the piano roll and automate it and get it to do exactly what I want it to do. Production is not about um, being a dope musician. It's about being uh, a person who can see a vision of something and, and hear a song and hear it fully produced in their heads before it's even created. So whatever it takes to get there doesn't matter. The main thing is that you get there. So a lot of like trap hi-hat type stuff or, or 808 bass lines, you know, you can really do that in the piano roll. That's where your money is gonna be. So let's go into point number four, which is transitions. Uh, this could be musical transitions. This can be um, a frequency sweep transition. It could even just be a drop transition where nothing happens at all, but it's just a clean drop. Um, I'll find you know the, the right transitions to you know segue into that next section to set up you know section uh, A from section B, you know, or, or vice versa. Um, I like to use sweeps. Um, it's, so I have to tell myself not to use sweeps at this point because it's such a go-to thing. Pay attention to transitions. They're really important. And it definitely distinguishes when it comes down to the arrangement, it distinguishes, oh, this is getting ready, to, the course is getting ready to come or this big drop is coming because I can tell by that buildup. So the party section is on the way. You know what I mean? So last but not least, number five, which is mixing. I think a lot of people over compensate um, when it comes down to mixing because some people feel and I'm and I'm guilty of this as well you feel like you're not really mixing until you whip out a multi-band compressor on something yeah now I'm mixing this is mixing and that's not true at all we're using tools that we don't even understand so the main thing with mixing is is I always say stick with the foundation so the foundation start with leveling leveling just take if you got a session bring everything down just bring everything down starting me i'm a drummer so you know i'm start with drums get the get the drums blending right you know you can lead with the kick or you can lead with the snare i just dropped the gym if you have a, a dope punchy kick to begin with then you don't have to overcompensate with compression on the back end so leveling proper leveling based on your taste and the genre the next thing from mix is Panning. Panning is based on personal preference and it's also a foundational thing. So there's just certain key things with panning, making sure that you have a overall stereo image. And that kind of goes back into sound selection where um, if you have a sound that has reverb baked into it, now you have already a hard panned instrument because of the reverb. So that reverb, especially if you're using a stereo or if it has a stereo reverb on it, um, it's already spread out for you. So now if you wanna take this whole stereo pad and then you take it and you put it all to the left, it's up to you, it's, it's not, I'm not saying it's wrong, but I'm saying that you will lose some of your stereo imaging and that affects the mix. So, you know, keep that in mind with your sound selection. If your sound selection are stereo, you know, 
very good image based sounds it's going to save you a lot of headache on the mix side so that's it for today uh, i hope these tips help you um, i want to close this out by saying thank you guys for watching this video once again give it a thumbs up please subscribe to my channel uh, hit that bell icon to get notifications for my next uploads i got a lot of content coming your way and um yeah guys it's been dope hope you guys enjoyed it peace out